Right, so for the last 13 years of Tory rule, we've been told a lot about what we can't afford anymore, haven't we? Whose fault that is, who is to blame, and the tough decisions that have to be made to cut spending, pay down the debt, posterity as the Tories advocated, no longer able to do the things we want to empower as Labour are telling us now. So what gets spent on? What gets done? There was always money for Ukraine. There was always money to deal with the pandemic. There was always money to keep the Tories in power. Theresa May bribed the DUP. Remember that one? There was always money to spend on stuff the government wanted to and in the way they wanted to. Best serving us, not usually at the forefront of their minds as all the pandemic waste has shown, but never necessarily the stuff we actually need and have needed for some time. This isn't a unique problem to recent governments either, but where there's been little to define Labour from the Tories, as we've seen over the course of far too many years now, certainly all the prime ministers that have been in power during my lifetime. I was born under James Callaghan, who was well to the right of Harold Wilson, for example. Thatcher and Kinnock, Major and Blair, Blair and Brown, Cameron up to Sunak and Starmer now. There's been sort all between them in their desire to serve establishment interests and not the well-being of the country, and it's gone on for far too long now. Infrastructure has been so poorly invested in in that time that an appalling report from the National Audit Office has put into perspective for me just how long this failure has gone on and why it cannot go on any longer. The NAO have now reported that some 700,000 children in the UK are attending schools in need of critical repairs to the point a school collapse causing death or serious injury is now considered very likely. The government right now due to years of disinterest, frankly, how can you take it as being due to any other reason, does not have the information necessary to manage these serious risks to our kids either. Do you know what is even worse, though? This isn't even a new report. The NAO reported this to the government in 2021, and they've still done soddle. You know, if it was Eton, if it was Harrow, if it was Winchester, the money for repairs wouldn't be a question. But our kids in ordinary comps and primary schools? Not a chance. An awful lot of schools in this country were built as prefab, quick, supposedly temporary measures, places to last a few years until proper buildings were built. This was part of the post-war mitigating measures. But you'd be amazed how many of these supposedly temporary buildings remain in place. My kids are actually luckier than a good many. Helston Community College, that is now called just Helston School when I went there, Got a new school building, replacing the 1960s era existing prefab building, which was an expansion of the original school building, which was built in the 1930s as a grammar school, and which is still in use. The school is built over two sites as a result, a five-minute walk from each other, basically. The kids follow a link path between the two. Anyway, as I said, my kids are lucky. The 1960s era building went, and they got a brand new school building in 2017. So it only took the better part of 60 years to get the proper building and replace the temporary structure. But for too many kids, the wait is still going. Their school is still crumbling around them. Now, I went to school there in the early 90s. I went to the crumbling building. I attended it. I remember the heat. They used to come through some of those classroom windows because the windows couldn't be opened. They had long been nailed shut for safety reasons. I can remember bits of the school being unusable as asbestos was ripped out for the obvious health reasons. I dread to think how much worse things actually became in the 20 odd subsequent years after I left before it was all torn down. But for so many kids around the country, that clock is still ticking. And now decades of failure to address these school buildings is becoming a real danger to our kids. And we have a government apparently not interested in the risk of a school collapse. If one does, if kids are killed, heaven forbid, heads should absolutely roll in government. They'll then have to rebuild the school anyway. Then they'll find the money to do it because kids will be without a school. Plus without all of the equipment lost in the school. So they'll need all that to be replaced as well. So it's false economy, therefore, as well as an irresponsible risk to life to not address this problem. And more quickly, because it's way past time it was done. So why won't they? That's the obvious excuse of not being able to afford it, as they always come out. But to anyone who watches me regularly or is just generally more switched on and makes sure they keep themselves well informed, well, no lack of money is never the issue in this country. The government have repeatedly demonstrated it's there when they want it. Spending more will drive inflation, some will say. We have a crisis with that on our hands right now. Well, I don't value that over kids' lives, education and well-being. So blow that excuse out of your arse and tax the rich, make them pay for the schools. You know what? Rich people used to do that sort of thing once upon a time. They used to get end up with schools and libraries and science blocks and stuff named after them. It was called philanthropy. But now they hoard their wealth instead. So force the issue tax it out of them, control inflation that way, and then you can spend again. Perhaps it's 
All being engineered this way, though. A few dead kids will prove state-controlled education is failing. Ramp up academization. Ramp up the privatization of education. It's Tory policy 101, isn't it? doesn't matter that privatization fails us at every turn. They still want more of it. Engineer the failure. Let someone rich make more profits out of it. It's a pretty sick thought, though, isn't it? Would you bet against it, though, with the politicians we've got? Currently in the UK, there are thought to be some 24,000 school buildings still operating beyond their intended lifespans. And of those, more than a third are in England because Welsh and Scottish devolution have not ignored the issue as greatly. Schools are crumbling right now, mainly post-war, short-term intended usage buildings, as so many are, because they were built as a stopgap to keep kids educated after the war. They were always meant to be replaced within a certain length of time. So construction materials used for them were on the quick and cheap side. Much of it made out of what is called reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete, or RAAC. Aerated concrete, that's a phrase sure to inspire images of solid building material, isn't it? Air-filled concrete. That is basically all it is, a lightweight form of concrete. Cheap, used from the 1950s all the way through, appallingly, apparently, all the way through to the 1990s. So there are school buildings not at all that old that have been built out of this cheap and nasty building material still. The government has been warned about schools being built out of this stuff since 2018, and still they've done so little. Just last month, four schools were closed by the Department for Education. Kids there now having to be taught in temporary outbuildings because they're now unsafe. I remember the asbestos era at Helston. Porter cabins were used in the bus park. That's what these kids now face, presumably. Their schools closed because they're structurally unsafe. Of the 24,000 schools still operating past their use-by dates, 600 of them have been identified as at risk of structural collapse because they're built out of this stuff. But of course, the schools were never intended to still be operating now. And RAAC, I'm sure, was not intended to still be used up to 50 years after the war ended. But it was and has been. And that's the fault of government after government not running the country in our interests, not even thinking of our kids. We have to stop electing people who say we can't do this, who we can't afford to do that, because ultimately it's all lies and it's failing the country and we need these things done. And if you're shocked, appalled and disgusted that you've not heard about this ticking time bomb, well, you should absolutely like, share and subscribe to this channel because I'll spill the beans on the stuff that gets ignored. No fear of that. And if you're looking forward to the next vid, well, don't despair. There's hundreds of videos just like the one you've just watched. So spend a bit longer with old Damo and perhaps consider this suggestion where Keir Starmer, although his education spokesman, has condemned the Tories ignoring this school building scandal. The question really is, will his future government be the one to finally fix it when he's not even prepared to keep his pledge on free school meals? He won't even feed the kids, let alone keep a building over their heads. And I'll uh, catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.